the show all about you and your ideas. We're here because we want to find geniuses. To that end, we asked you, the great British public, to send us your cleverest ideas. Those of you whose ideas have the sniff of genius about them are then invited here to the studio so that their merits can be properly assessed by an expert. And when I say expert, I mean celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> Team Genius was thrilled when some 10,000 of you got in touch, and I don't mind telling you that after reading only a handful of your emails, I was moved to more secure accommodation. <laughs> Judging your ideas tonight is a comic actor of some renown. He starred in comedies such as Ideal and Happiness, as well as TV dramas such as Bleak House and A Midsummer Night's Dream. You might have seen him in Benidorm, especially if you've ever been to Benidorm. <laughs> and especially if your trip to Benidorm coincided with the filming schedule of the sitcom of the same name. I refer, of course, to Benidorm, the sitcom in which he appears. Ladies and gentlemen, the star of Benidorm, Johnny Vegas. <laughs> Now, Johnny, thrilled to have you. Thank you thrilled for coming. To be here. No, no, it's great to have a, a genius of your calibre here. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's prove you're human. Any any particularly ungenious moments you've had along the way? I worked at Argos, and I, you know, when you used to go at the front, you had the computer. Yeah. They give me one day on there. You know, they go, it's your big break, kid. And everything used to come up hyphenated. And um, I j just rushing, and I read it quickly, and I, I you know, the woman in the audience, and I went, horse her duvet. <laughs> and she went, I beg your pardon, I went, horse her duvet, and she went, do you mean an hors d'oeuvre set? <laughs> 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 of course I meant an hors d'oeuvre set. Well, I, that is why you're here this evening, because you're human, but you're also a genius. Now, Johnny, let's see if we can unearth some more geniuses tonight to keep you company. Our first idea comes from Kate Pearce of Bristol. Dear Genius, I would like to propose a form of dating insurance. Couples would simply put a pound or two every week into a money box when things are going really well. But if it stops going so well and you split up, the person who's dumped then gets given the cash and they can spend it on chocolate or wine or strippers or whatever's going to make them feel better. <laughs> okay. Very good. Um, I like Do you think you'd be up or down on this deal? Um, me? Yeah. Constantly down. No, hang on. I've, I've done the maths wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be rich. Hey! <laughs> yeah, a pound a week. You know what I mean? If the sex is good. Fine. But... Yeah. Three weeks in somebody who's really annoying, three weeks in their company just to buy a pint is. <laughs> I, I don't think Kate was proposing it as a money making scheme. <laughs> It wasn't like deliberately dating someone you don't like. But they're really rich. They're... In order to get yeah. the money out of them. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's open. The system's open for abuse, isn't it? No, no absolutely. <laughs> who's who's going to arbitrate who holds the money? Because obviously, when you're all loved up, everything seems like a brilliant idea. And it's like, yes, of course I love you. I'll put money in here. But if you couldn't agree, maybe you could run up a tab at a local pub. And then whoever gets stumped, the, the person who's. You have to trust them to pay it. Well, they have to pay it because obviously the landlord's got their okay. name. So. But what if and you do put, put the money away? in? Mm -hmm. Well, if you keep putting the money in and the pot gets to 500 and you're going, I actually quite like her, but I really want that remote control car. <laughs> so I'm just going to be a complete shit and get her to finish with yeah, me. Yeah, I think then it would go to the friends or pub council who would then get involved and, if necessary, items of value could be removed from the property. So, like, CDs or... I've been in relationships before where you start collecting things towards the end. You know things aren't going right, so you start borrowing books and CDs you know you're not really going to give back. <laughs> I went through my own uh, romantic history uh, from adulthood um, and working out whether I was the dumpy or the dumper. Uh -huh. uh, my first relationship, three weeks, dumpy, followed by seven months, dumper. Four and a half years, dumpy, still hurts. Uh, six months, dumper. One year, dumpy. Four months, dumper. Thirteen months, dumper. Seven months, dumper. She was dumpy, but I, I was a dumper. <laughs> One month, dumper. Six months, dumper. Four months, dumper. And then six months, dumpy. That is final. I've even removed her icon from my Nintendo Wii. Um, <laughs> at the end of yeah. that, I am £115 to the good. I'm not sure that £115 compensates me for what adds up to basically <laughs> ten years of strife. <laughs> When you're all in the beginning of a relationship and everything's rainbows and kitten dreams and picnics and it's all, ah, oh, then, yeah, maybe you could put more in then. What happens if you special. haven't got the pound? 
<laughs> just that week, you know, if you say I'm Ooh. good for it. Yeah, I, I was How thinking about maybe like beer tokens or something. So, like, in my head, I kind of know that, right, you've bought me three pints and I've only bought you two, so quid's in there. You've already mentioned setting evening. this up at the pub. <laughs> <laughs> maybe being about buying drinks. Maybe having a person in the pub being an arbitrator. I like to think the whole idea has been centralised and having a core, a core place where, like a court almost, where yeah. these things could be worked I, out. As do most alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what some, some real couples uh, make of this. <laughs> um, I think we've got some couples over there. And you look... That looks like a hell of a coupley crowd. You're both wearing green. Yeah. You Aww. have to be a couple. <laughs> you so like, budge up you, I'll sit in the middle. Um, OK, uh, what's your name, sir? Paul. Paul, and you are? Stephanie. Stephanie. And how long have you been together, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been together, Stephanie? About three years. About three years. OK. Uh, so, three years, that's uh, about 156 weeks. Mm -hmm. So, you would be in, one of you would be in for £156 <laughs> if this system was in. OK? Now, I'm not going to ask you whether that's worth it, because I think we know the answer to that. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a card okay. and a pen. OK? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the same for you, Paul. <coughs> OK? And without looking at each other's answers, uh, and be honest here, don't say a million pounds and try and be all mushy and romantic. I want a genuine number <laughs> of what you think would be adequate compensation <laughs> should the other person decide to dump you today. <laughs> Three years, I want a genuine number. I want to actually know what you think would actually make up for the heartbreak. OK. What's been your longest relationship, Johnny? Uh, 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 two years. OK. And were you the dumper or the dumpy? A uh, bit of both. I don't think it's dumping if there's death involved. <laughs> <laughs> and all I used our money for was the burial. <laughs> so Fair I didn't really gain. Yeah. And I had to buy drinks for the family. <laughs> so technically so I was out of pocket. You were out of pocket, OK. <laughs> and a little bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have a look at uh, your answer. Hey. Let's have a look. Um... OK, we have £250,000 over here oh. against <laughs> £303. <laughs> which is actually, I think you've got uh, £300 plus £3 for a pint. Yes, that's right. OK, if you two want to stay sitting together for the rest of the show, you can. <laughs> Maybe if you want to go somewhere and talk about that. <laughs> that's fine also, but thank you very much. I'll give them a round of applause for their participation. <laughs> Doesn't that, Kate, prove that this system isn't really fair? Yeah, but... People have different scales of what they would feel compensated for. But that's for. why you agree a certain amount to be popped into the pot each week, and it seems like a small amount, but it adds up. And I feel really bad, cos they seem so sweet. <laughs> Johnny, is Kate, with her dating insurance idea, <laughs> a genius or not? Quite a good idea, but entirely unpragmatic in its application. I'm sorry, it's not genius. <laughs> OK, well, let's see if this next idea delivers. It comes from Chris McLeod, who hails from Cambridge. Dear genius, I've come up with the torture box. <laughs> it's a box for torturing inanimate objects. If, for example, a fork falls to the floor continuously or your lost keys mysteriously show up exactly where you've left them or your toast burns itself, very frustrating. But if you place the items in the torture box, they'll be given such a good sorting out that they don't do it again. <laughs> you may be um, wondering about the actual workings of the box. <laughs> A bit too complex to be described here, but uh, <laughs> but, it, <I'm> it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. In fact, it could be virtual because the effect is exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> you say it's for inanimate objects. Yeah, because they are so intensively annoying, and there's very few ways you can really get back at them. Are you sure this is going to work? Because, you know, um, in The Great Escape, when they put Steve McQueen in the cooler, it just made him more determined every time. But he was very animate. 
it... <laughs> yeah. You see, it's... if it'd been a... a plug... <laughs> you know, you tread on a plug. I mean, what can... What can be more annoying than that? And it's so painful. And how do you get at the... <laughs> how do you get back at the plug? Is this just not a form of denial for clumsiness? <laughs> no, because I find, especially cutlery, vindictive. <laughs> there are varieties of torture boxes. I mean... <laughs> I bet there are. Johnny, I can... I, I, just... I can feel some cynicism. Just... To yeah. my right. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a, a, a I deep I don't think dose. he's well. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cynicism, it's genuine concern. <laughs> We've got a justice system. You start imprisoning inanimate objects, <laughs> right? Then in your head, you know what I mean? Suddenly a spoon turns up as his lawyer <laughs> because he's been detained without proper questioning. <laughs> you have to introduce new anti terrorist laws so you can keep the spoon in there. <laughs> you know, and hold him against his will. The next thing, you're naked in your garden giving a press conference to a gnome. <laughs> With me. No, I'll no, show you how this no. works, Johnny. Honestly, Wait. I'll show you. Put it in the box! Because <laughs> I was cynical as well, Johnny, but I thought I'll, I'll try it for a little while. So we had a torture box made, and this has been my torture box for the best part of the last week, OK? D don't show me the technology. No, I'm not going to show you what's inside. <laughs> but let me tell you, day one, I did lose my keys. I found them uh, about an hour after I was started looking. They were, they were on the bedside table where I thought they should have been. Uh, and I bung them in here for just an hour, and I felt a lot better about myself. I really did. It was, it was fine. The next day, I, I trod on a piece of Lego. <laughs> Went in the box. I gave it a couple of hours, and I felt much better about myself. The trouble is, on day three, I stubbed my toe on the torture box. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I had to make this. <laughs> torture box mark two Excellent. for punishing my torture box. Yeah, <laughs> Now, a lot of people, they do get curious about what is inside the box, don't they, Chris? Yes, they do. Yeah. They want to know. That's the first question they ask. Yeah, well... Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's mysterious, isn't it? Yeah? Ooh. <laughs> What's inside the torture box, people are wondering. Well, as you can see, I'm punishing my green lamp at the moment. <laughs> It, it got very annoying. It, the bulb started going, and it, oh, it, yeah. know, it was a loose connection inside the lamp. Yeah, but look, so at him now, look at him now. He's getting to smoking. He's, he's, he's been hanging out with other naughty lamps. Yeah, it is actually on fire. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think that means it deserves so to have it, another is it, session. Is it, is it, is it... Inside the box. <laughs> so is it the fear of the unknown that will control the inanimate object? No, it's much more simplistic than that. It's just pure hate. Let's go and sit down again, John. <laughs> Mechanics of the box. <laughs> is it the fear of the unknown, or is it the box can't hate? Well, no, there is. You a, hate the object. The proof of the pudding really is uh, in actually testing it out for yourself. You get a box, and <laughs> immediately you'll be using it. <laughs> <laughs> it's that intimidating thing of going. I'm telling you, you get a box, you find out for yeah, yourself. Exactly. You think I'm joking? <laughs> you think I'm joking, mate? You do it. You live with naughty <laughs> knives. Uh, Johnny. I find it hard to believe that I'm asking you this. <laughs> yeah. But is Chris McLeod and his torture box genius or not? Um, I think it's madness. <laughs> I doesn't discount it from genius. <laughs>
follow up, and you could do three for two. <laughs> <laughs> Make a baseball cap for the Sphinx. <laughs> been to Cairo. <laughs> you put an hat on that bugger, I'll be there every summer. <laughs> How about a sun lounger with removable boob holes for sunbathing face down? <laughs> Popular. Maybe, maybe it shouldn't have gone in the bin. More fish to make fishing interesting. <laughs> <laughs> a person flap, like a cat flap, but for people. <laughs> That's a door. <laughs> that is a door. Isn't it? That's what they are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if somebody... <laughs> somebody doesn't get the general idea of how something works. And, you know the simplicity of design, and that's yeah. what makes it lovely. Two-way ladders. Ladders that you can go down as well as up. <laughs> Achieved <laughs> through use of a simple up down switch on the side of the ladder. <laughs> this would save me having to flip the ladder over all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that is surely as much as we can bear in one sitting. Oh, you want to bring them back in there? Okay, well, let's move straight on with our next idea, which comes from Sheerness on Sea in Kent in the brain of Richard Jeffries. <laughs> Dear genius, many of us have suffered the tragedy of a child's tears following the unexpected loss of a much-loved pet. The real victims of this situation, of course, are the parents. We have to scour the local pet shops in search of an identical substitute quickly before the child returns from school. To alleviate this torment, I propose that when you buy a pet for your child, such as a hamster, gerbil, it comes with a simple, all-in-one, zip-up fursuit. Then, when it dies, you simply unzip the suit, take out the expired creature, <laughs> pop in any replacement, <laughs> zip it up. Hey! The child will never know. <laughs> Clearly popular in the room, John. <laughs> Don't tell the kids. Because, you know, the British public are famous for their love of cruelty to animals. <laughs> uh, are, you a, are you a pet lover? I am, yeah. It's an awful... Um, it's an awful thing to explain to a child, isn't it? It's, it's a terrible... And the beauty of this is, you can put any pet in the zip-up suit. You get to the pet shop, he hasn't got any mice, put a gerbil in. Hasn't got any gerbil, put a hamsters in. Yeah, it kind of runs out when you go, put a cat in. <laughs> no, no, no. Get a tarantula. OK, one or two legs too many, snip them off, put them in. Scruffy's on the ceiling. <laughs> It works. I think you haven't got a cat. Put <laughs> ten million ants in. <laughs> what happens when the hamster wants to go back and visit relatives? He's changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, since he's been in Lardy Dar, London, look at him. I've got one here. We, we've had one made. Um, you know, nice zip up suit. Okay. <laughs> uh, for the sake of uh, just to explain, we have put eye holes in. I'll just poke the pencil through. Oh! You can see. Right. So it can, you know, it would be able to look through the eye holes. It's even got pore holes. If I can just get that through. It's a bit of a tight squeeze, admittedly, but they do come through like yeah, but, so. Yeah, so, but, you know, if, if the, the hamster if, can... If they're hungry, they'll work it out. Yeah, they? yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice little cute hamster. Unzip it. Right, now. Okay. Now, look now, at his markings. You show him that. And you've got to go through the whole rigmarole of going, do you want to go to a fancy dress party? <laughs> OK, well, let's see if he does want to go to a fancy dress party. OK, let's have a, let's have a go at this, OK? I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> it's a tight squeeze, it's not... Dave, we've had very full careers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just... I'll be honest, it's, it's not very comfortable viewing, so I'll just... Get down here and take the lid off and if we... Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Yes. That's a perfect transformation, isn't it? I mean. <laughs> As you can see, no discomfort whatsoever. The zip is hidden zip. completely. Yeah, yeah, it tucks yeah. in. Okay, now unzip him. Do you want... <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to unzip him, I will. No, I'll do it. It's all right. <laughs> now, this is one of the problems. What happens yes. if your child 
sees the yes. zip and thinks it's like a Russian doll. But it's, just, yeah, but it's just like every other toy. It's got it's all got a zip up the front. It's like Barbie. It's like Action Man. It's, it's great because it fits right in with what they already know. I think you've mistaken a hamster with a hot water bottle. <laughs> That could work. <laughs> now, I'm telling you, I woke up and I was beige. <laughs> You've had stranger days, come on. You know. <laughs> Johnny, it's decision time. The pet zip suit, is it genius or is not? Genius. 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 It's got its flaws. <laughs> I won't deny. And the <laughs> idea of this becoming a global success and you actually having money scares me. <laughs> But the gem of the idea I kind of like, so... Um, it's red for not genius and white for as genius. As long as he can... I know, but I just like playing games with people's <laughs> emotions. Um, I actually think it's genius. Congratulations! <laughs> OK, well, our final idea tonight comes from Andy Slater of Edinburgh. Dear genius, how about... A conveyor duvet. It's similar to a conventional duvet, however it forms a complete loop around the bed. Thus, when one partner pulls the duvet towards them, <laughs> the bedding simply rolls around the bed, keeping both partners covered at all times and thus achieving marital bliss. Back. seems to have immediate potential to me. What's it going to retail at? <laughs> $29.99. All oh, right, OK. That's a good sound answer. What if? I mean, completely speculative and from stories I've heard. Um, what if somebody has a few too many and... hits the bed? <laughs> and then somebody pulls the duvet off? <laughs> And then what you've got is a turd in rotation. <laughs> really. Perhaps... Perhaps not the product for them. I'm only putting out feelers. <laughs> I'm just... It is... It, it's difficult enough changing a duvet as it is. Mm. But your duvet has to go over the whole bed. You're having to mm. lift up the legs in order to, to get it well, on there, sure. Well, it's a fairly simple operation. May I demonstrate? Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> It slips down, the tube of material simply drops down by the legs of the bed like a pair of underpants. <laughs> Andy, it's interesting that you've, you've made a model there, uh, but we've also made a model. Uh, ours is one-to-one -one scale. Oh, we've splendid. got the real thing. So, Johnny, join me, if you will, over at the bed. Um, thank you, fellas. Uh, I'm superstitious. I always like to sleep nearest the desk. Okay. So, um, do you want to pop round to that side? Is that... <laughs> well, look like a sexually aggressive Bert and Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sexually aggressive Bert and an Ernie. Bert, I think I'm drunk again. I don't want to go to work okay. tomorrow. <laughs> We're just going to see how this pans out in practice, Andy. Um, right. One problem I, I immediately get, cos I'm a leg-out man. I like yeah, to regulate yeah, yeah, my yeah. body temperature I by like leaving the leg out of, of the bed. Um, and you mm. can't do that immediately. You are kind of trapped. What you've got here is a duvet come snare. <laughs> there's, not, there's not a great amount of movement in this. <laughs> <laughs> Above you, sometimes I like to take control. <laughs> right, so I pull the duvet. What am I? Yeah, go on. I pull it. Uh, no, I, I guess you, I'm getting pulled across. <laughs> <laughs> ah! That's it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! You get closer to me. I get to the edge. Oh no! I go off. <laughs> You. <laughs> right. Follow me back. I can't. I've got 
got no choice. <laughs> Man in the green jumper. What was your name again? Paul. Paul, can you do us a favour? Just run over to the chair that Johnny sits in and press whichever button he tells you to press. Look, I'll build some momentum, I'll start sliding. <laughs> oh, boy. I'll just go to baby! <laughs> go on, baby, get up there. Go on! Oh, I can't find it! I'm sorry! <laughs> Just answer the question. Is it genius or not? It's shite! <laughs> Press the red button! Not a genius. There we have it, Johnny. Uh, you've seen a few ideas, and you've declared a number of them to be genius, but only one of them can be declared to Knight's top genius and win the coveted genius trophy. Oh, yeah. Look at that, yeah, yeah. By the way, this isn't any old trophy. This is actually the clockwork edition. <laughs> you just turn this for a few goes, and it will trophy you for up to four hours without any batteries at all. You can... <laughs> honestly, you can just leave that in the desert, and it will trophy on no attention whatsoever. It's a wonderful thing. Now, I know it's a tough call, so I'm going to give you ten seconds to think about it, but when that genius chime sounds, I am going to have to know your decision. Johnny, your time starts now. <laughs> OK, Johnny, is it Chris McLeod's torture box or is it Richard Jeffries and his pet zip suit? Time is up. Johnny, what's it to be? It's got to be the inanimate object torture box. <laughs> here you go. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, Johnny. Oh, yeah. Well, there we have it. Congratulations to tonight's top genius, Chris McLeod, and his torture box. And thanks to Johnny Vegas for being a genius guest, to all of our contestants, genius or not, and, of course, to you for watching. If you think you might be a genius, do get in touch. You can find us online at the Genius website, www.bbc.co.uk slash genius. And don't worry, if you didn't catch that address, you can find it, along with all the show's details, on our website at www.bbc.co.uk slash genius. Good night. And you can also see the whole series so far on the BBC iPlayer.